What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to Evidence Based Weight Loss Part 15 of 20. We're getting there guys. We're three-fourths of the way through. Uh, thank you for sticking around this long in the series. I encourage you guys once again to take notes on Microsoft Word or Google Drive because there's a lot of information. You're not going to remember all of it. I don't remember all of it. And uh, don't forget there are 30 recipes down below in the description of this video to uh, help give you ideas to help you lose weight. They are all healthy plant-based recipes. Go check them out. 20 of them are from us. 10 of them are from other uh, YouTube channels. I am filming outside. I just finished training a client out here. Uh, you guys know me, I love the beautiful scenery, the green, the wind, the birds. Anybody who's been following this channel for a long time would know that. I will try to keep this camera as steady as possible. Uh, normally I have this up against something, but I'll, I'll, I'll do my best. Anyways, let's talk about why does weight loss eventually plateau? Well, we have something called metabolic adaptation. Metabolic adaptation is simply weight loss plateauing. So here's the problem with the 3,500 calorie rule. The 3,500 calories is a pound, is what we always say. Well, here's kind of the flaw of it. So example, let's say a 150 pound person is cutting 500 calories a day for three years. What will they be after those three years? They'll be negative six pounds if they cut 500 calories a day for three years. Uh, so ultimately when you become thinner, calories do not burn as efficiently, just as a big car needs more gas than the little car, a big semi truck. You know how many those, you know how many miles per gallon those things get? They get about five or six miles per gallon. I would know, I used to work at a trucking company. Uh, what does a typical car get? I don't know, 20, 30, 40 miles per gallon? I'm no car expert, don't quote me for sure on that. You can quote me for sure on the semi trucks though, getting five to six miles per gallon. So it's the same kind of thing. A uh, bigger car needs more gas, a littler car needs less gas. Sorry about that, a client just called me and he wants to meet me here in 15 minutes. So I gotta hurry up and film this video. Hopefully you guys can hear me over this wind. Let's talk another flaw about the uh, rule of calories. So again, let's say you take a 200 pound man takes in an excess of 500 calories a day for 10 years. That, that is definitely possible. I'm sure actually many people in America are doing that taking in an extra 200 calories a day. I'm sure there's a lot of people, 200 calories extra a day than what their body needs and they do that for 10 years straight. Well, if you were to do that for 10 years straight, you know how much you would weigh? You would weigh 700 pounds. It is highly rare for somebody to weigh 700 pounds. People that get up to 700 pounds take in over 20,000 calories every single day. Uh, the more you weigh, the more calories you simply burn, just like the example of the semi-truck carrying gas. It burns more fuel. Just by existing, you have to pump more blood to more areas of a larger body. Every pound loss may reduce our me resting metabolic rates by seven calories a day. All sources in that number and in this uh, diet, or this citation website, all the sources are at. Just type in the number at that website. Some research founds that the biggest losers contestants found that their metabolic rate slowed by an extra 500 calories a day when they became 100 pounds lighter. The real surprise is when they retested them five years later, they still had a 500 calorie a day handicap. Contestants had to cut 500 calories more than anyone else their size to maintain the same weight loss. To me, it kind of sounds like metabolic damage. I don't know much about it. I'm no expert in it, nor does Dr. Greger address much of it in his book, but it sounds like that they were just in such a caloric deficit all the time that they, they had to work twice as hard just to keep the weight off. Six years later, the biggest losers concessions still did an hour of day of exercise, but still gained weight because they could not, they did not keep their calories under 3000 for the day. From what I understand of people like The Biggest Loser, when you are really heavy, like when you're getting in the three, 400 pound plus range, when you're getting the upper three, 400s and more, from what, in my personal opinion, there's, there's mental issues going on up here. Maybe you've been abused, maybe you've been sexually harassed, maybe you've gone through a traumatic event, maybe you had a son or child die, maybe you lost a business, in my personal opinion, somebody that is just extremely obese, we're not just talking obese, a little overweight, we're not talking just one or 200 pounds overweight, we're talking when somebody gets to be like 300 pounds overweight, I believe there is something mentally going on 
This is my personal opinion. I've watched a lot of seasons on The Biggest Loser. I've watched at least 12 of those seasons, and I've noticed time and time again those people all seem to have a lot of traumatic events and a lot of uh, mental issues, and I think that's why those people typically get big. Don't have any data to back that up. This is just my personal opinion of uh, observation. Pet toes often come in six to eight months of weight loss. What tends to happen after six months of dieting, your metabolism goes on a rampage. Often what happens is that people will actually be unconscious, building up their caloric intake over those six months without even realizing it. So yeah, your body gets sick of being in a caloric deficit day after day after day, that I believe that people will probably actually slowly begin to take in more and more calories. The body's like, what are you doing to me? Why am I constantly in a negative energy balance? End of the six months, your metabolism and physical activity may have also slowed down. So one thing to keep in mind, when uh, you are losing weight, we often lose muscle. So it is good to uh, be lifting, be bicep curl and bench press and all that good stuff. Uh, doing that can help you prevent 90% uh, of strength loss during calorie restriction. So it's really that simple. Weight loss begins to plateau. You're a smaller person, and you need uh, don't you don't need as much fuel, or like like we gave the example of the semi truck. The semi truck is bigger. It uh, just burns more fuel than a little minivan. You know, people get discouraged. Uh, they'll start doing good, and then six, eight months, a year in, they'll be like, "Man, I'm really plateauing a weight loss." Um, I mean, I'm at the point where I'm in the 160s, and like, I'm trying to lose weight, and it is hard, man. Uh, I'm really, I'm almost done with school here. I got about three weeks left. Today is April 27th, so I got about three weeks left. I'm gonna be hitting it hard with running and biking and swimming. I'd like to get, man, about down to 160 or maybe even in the upper 150 so I can get really, really lean. That is a hard place to get. It is really hard to get in those single body fat percentages. That's what I'm trying to get in. I just want to look really good for summer and I want to be an example. But you really have to work for it to get those last couple pounds off. Um, I mean, if you're, if you're 400 pounds, yeah, those first 100 pounds are going to be really easy. But you go from 400 pounds and you're trying to get to 150 and you're now 170, those last 20 pounds are going to be the absolute hardest to get off. Now we're gonna move to the next thing. We're gonna talk about negative calorie salads. So if you give people a 100 calorie salad composed of lettuce, cherry tomatoes, celery, cucumbers, carrots, they will end up eating less pasta. The people ate 200 fewer calories of pasta, so the meal had negative 100 calories by throwing in the salad. However, if you, if you repeat the study and add a high fat dressing and some cheese, they ended up taking in over 1,000 calories. General rule, before you eat anything else, eat those salads first. You wanna get those vegetables in your system. If you have, if people have salads side by side during the meal versus having the salad before the meal, after three months of doing this before lunch and dinner, they lost four more pounds than the other group. One of the thoughts is that if you do this preloading first, your satiety hormones uh, ramp up before going into the main meal. So in other words, it's better to uh, preload your meal uh, with lower calorie foods first to fill you up before you eat the junk food. As mom and dad always said, as your mom always told you, don't eat your dessert first. And then the last thing we're going to talk about is soup. Soup eaters tend to be slimmer in the U.S. according to this study. Soup slows emptying in the stomach by 25%, so it keeps you full longer. Apparently if you eat soup at lunch, and seven hours later you're eating dinner, you're supposedly gonna eat 100 less calories at dinner time. My own thoughts about soups, avoid those creamy soups, those are really high in fat. You want to go for those vegetable soups. Now, one study showed that when people eat a casserole with water and then they go to a buffet, they do not eat any less calories. But if you turn that into a soup, they will eat 350 calories less at the buffet. So in other words, eat your soups. Uh, there is at least one recipe of soup in the description down below of this video. I think there's actually two or three soup recipes. One of them is a real recent soup recipe that was done within the last six months or so. So I encourage you to check those soup recipes out because apparently that can cause you to eat 350 calories less at a meal. And that is it for today. Weight loss is gonna plateau, expect it, know that it's coming. Um, people can get really discouraged by it and I'm just letting you know 
today in today's video that it's going to happen you're going to get smaller and your body not going to burn as many calories when you get smaller it's just what happens otherwise that person cutting 500 calories a day will be negative six pounds in just three years that 150 pound person will be in other words the main theme of this video is calories in calories out is not always a hundred percent the most efficient way to lose weight there the science to weight loss is a bit more complex to that yet at the same time it doesn't need to be that complex you just got to eat a high volume of uh, vegetables and whole foods and you could be like the study we talked about a few weeks ago where people lost the most weight ever recorded in the medical literature without forced calorie restriction or without added exercise and uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video Glad I could get outside here and film this outside. It is a beautiful, gorgeous day. So rare for it to be this warm in, this, in uh, the Chicago suburbs. And I got to train another guy in about five minutes here. So I will talk to you guys later. I'll see you guys in part 16. I don't remember what it's about. We're coming down to the end here. Uh, thank you so much for watching, guys. Bye-bye.